Hey there, welcome back to the vlog. So you may remember on the last vlog, I was talking about a project that I wanted to do where it was write something for the Game Boy and then be able to compile it. So what we're gonna to do today is we're going to go through how a Game Boy ROM is made and the two routes that I tried in order to do this and uh, yeah, how I kind of failed and <laughs> basically pulled my hair out in order to do this. Now, you may remember if you've been following this vlog for a while, there's a series of applications where we've built the same application over and over and you know, we've done it on Android, we've done it in Win32 using C, we've done it in uh, uh, Flutter, we've done it in uh, .NET, we've done it in Java. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you the two different methods that I used on this particular project, but we're not going to replicate the entire program because even though the entire program already was very, very simple, this one was just so much work that I'm, yeah, I, I don't want to invest that much time <laughs> trying to make this work perfectly. So having said that, I have uh, taken all of the source code that I generated in the final version of this, uploaded it to GitHub. Um, I'll put down here the link if you want to go and check out the source code and uh, yeah, feel free to do whatever you want with it. And um, yeah, so let me go through this with you. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to show you is the C++ version that I tried. Um, I'm just using Visual Studio Code here and we have this new.c. Now this is a basic uh, program that when you install the Game Boy Development Kit or GBDK, and you can install that using Brew, which is what I did on this Mac. Um, this is basically all of the source code that you need in order to generate a working Game Boy app. Now, as you can see, there's very little to it. So we include the Game Boy stuff and the standard I.O. from C++ and then there's a void main. Inside the void main, we have a three of the print format commands. Then it does a wait for this J start and that's just a, a declaration that's inside this gb.h so after the start has been hit then it says start button detected and we run the lcc compiler in order to compile this so what came out of it at the end of it like if we go into here you can see it's new.gb but it's 33k and i'm like how does what is effectively eight lines of code generate 33k like surely the baggage can't be that big around this so it got me thinking is there a way to do this using the assembler well yes it turns out that there is a way to do it but it's not quite as easy obviously as doing it in c plus plus first things first i had to go back to brew and install something else called the Rednex Game Boy Development Kit or RGBDK. And so what we'll do is we'll jump over to this now. Okay, so having loaded up the second attempt, I'll run you through the four files first of all because uh, this is what you're going to download if you go to Bitbucket, which I've put the link to down below. and. So what we've got is the Game Boy hardware, and this is just basically a declarations file. And it basically outlines what the different registers are and what they do as far as the hardware is concerned. So, you know, what the different sound ports are, what the different IO ports are, uh, you know, how different joystick uh, uh, buttons work, how the start button um, is identified and so forth. So the next thing, in order to print anything to the screen, we needed a character set. So there's this IBM PC1.inc and this is basically a very, very old DOS font. Um, if you look here, you can actually see like this here 
is a what is that that's probably a club of some type uh, there's some O's and things actually let me go down to where the letters start oh here's, here's the numbers so you can clearly see here that's a zero this is a one and what they've done is where the X's are that's where the pixels are um, if I come over to the side here we can actually see a bit clearer what that looks like because zoomed out you can actually see the individual characters so yeah like here's here's for instance the character A if we go back across to oops, to where that is you can see here how that's defined so all this is is literally a very very old DOS font and it's being identified using these data bytes in assembler so we'll come out of that file the next one was this memory.asm and what this basically is is a series of macros written in assembler that allow you to do things like copy information to video ram or back out of video ram to normal ram and so forth like there really is nothing in here that is uh <sighs> in any way sort of complicated it's, it's literally just pushing ram around and copying it <laughs> uh, popping stuff off stacks and copying it back to ram so that's what that file does the next one is the readme this is something that i created quickly just to explain to anybody that's going to the bitbucket account how to install what is necessary to compile this, how you compile it, and then how you run it. And uh, the final part is the test ASM file, which is the actual program itself. And this is where I'm gonna spend the bulk of the next couple of minutes in here. So what we've got is the first line where we include the Game Boy hardware and the IBM PC. Now you'll see here that it says that uh, this was got from devars.com. Yes, that's where I, I got those particular files from. However, what I then found was that they didn't always compile because the memory one appeared to be missing one of the uh, um, memory VRAM copy macros that was necessary. So, what I've got does compile here, um, however, it's not what you'll find if you go to their website. So anyway, um, the next part of this is setting up the IRQs or the interrupts for the Game Boy. Um, I didn't realize until starting out on this particular project that the Game Boy is actually 60 frames a second. So what will happen is this vertical blank, which resides at address hex 40 in memory, um, it literally gets called 60 times a second. If you wish to create a counter or something like that for timer purposes, then this would be where you would have your counter. So, you know, every 60 times that your counter is incremented, once it gets to 60, you know that a second has gone by. Uh, because, you know, that's how many frames per second you're you're doing. Um, and then, yeah, the, the other interrupts, just things like serial and, and so forth. So anyway, what then happens is at address 100, this is where the bootloader will start. And the bootloader, it actually won't run until it's found. There's a particular piece of uh, information it's looking for. If we go back to the Game Boy hardware, go right down to the bottom. This Nintendo scrolling logo, which is defined here, if that is not in the program, the bootloader won't actually run the ROM. So even though this is not a official Nintendo ROM image, we have to include the Nintendo scrolling logo because if we don't, the Game Boy or the emulator or anything else literally will not run this code. So let me just go back to our code for a second. So the bootloader jumps in here. The first thing we do is a no operation and then we jump to begin. So begin is down here. All this is up here is just loading the ROM header and the ASCII character set. So the first thing again, no op, then we disable the interrupts. So what we basically do is we, we clear the screen and we load the character set into memory. What we're then doing 
is we are taking this data that's down here. So there's a couple of things that you need to know about down here that are hard coded. We've got this first text, uh, which has a address at first text and first text end is the end address. And then the data bytes are the bits in the middle. So we've got first text and second text. And we have these macros down here. There's one first stop LCD, and then there is wait, and then there is uh, turn off the LCD. Yeah, so th those macros, they will get called up here. So we set our coordinates to the upper right corner of the screen. We stop the LCD, we load our information that we want to display into RAM. And then we do this mem copy VRAM, which is found in the uh, memory assembler. Uh, so mem copy VRAM is this one here. What this then does is it will take that information, copy it into the video RAM. Once it's in video RAM, then of course it's going to display. So the next thing we do is we copy in the second lot of text, and then we just basically go into an infinite loop. So it, it, it waits, does a no operation, then it jumps back to the wait again. So it just goes round and round and round here. If I now load this up in the Game Boy emulator, so this will be uh, Visual Boy Advance. Okay, so I'm just gonna do an open and we are going to go to the desktop. So just to show you the original one that was done in C++. Yeah, so what this does, it says, uh, you know, Game Boy Test version one, if this compiles, it'd be a miracle, press start. If I hit enter, which is the start button, sure enough, start button detected. So it's 34K a program compiled just to do that. What we'll now do is we'll jump over to the one written in assembler. And yeah, all that work just for this. So there you go. I mean, it, it does work. Um, the instructions to do the compile are here. So you, once you've installed this RGBDS, so the Rednecks Game Boy Development System. So what we say here is, you know, RGBASM, the output is going to be test.o, but the input is test.asm, which is our file. We then have to link it. So, you know, our output is going to be test.gb, the input is going to be test.o. Then we have to run this RGB fix. And what that basically does is it takes the test.gb and calculates things like checksums and, and so forth. If the checksums don't match the rest of the program, then the emulator is not going to run it. So that just basically fudges the output file, uh, the .gb, in order to make it work. So yeah, once that's done, finally, pick an emulator and do a file open and pick out your test.gb, which is what we did here. And there we go. I mean, it, it does run. It does what it's supposed to do. And those two strings match what we've got here. So all that work just for this. And the final thing just to show you is the size of the file. It actually came out exactly the same size, 33K. So there you go. So there you go. That is how this was done. And um, yeah, I mean, take away what you will. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna pretend that this particular project was well done. It was very much a case of trial and error, uh, more error than anything else. <laughs> but uh, you know, it is what it is. And uh, the final result, as you can see, you know, we got something working. It may not be brilliant, it may not be perfect, but it, it does work and we know why it works. So, you know, that's the important thing and, you know, it at least allows me to convey that to you. So anyway, if you like these, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Speak to you soon. Bye.